When we last featured St. Johnsville four years ago, we visited the Hungry Bear. We hear there's a new owner, but that the cafe still serves up great food and hungry as a bear portions. Well, I've owned it for a year and a half, my partner and I, Skip, um, and I've worked here since it opened. Um, Veronica and Brian Howard owned it before, and I waitressed for them for like six years, and then I decided to buy it. Well, I've waitressed all my life and worked in a restaurant all my life. I worked at Barnes's Luncheonette in Salisbury Center. I uh, started there when I was 13, so, and I've always loved to cook, so I thought I'd give it a try. We've kept the growler, the um, bear paw, all the specialty sandwiches that Veronica, she came up with those. Um, I added wraps, the wraps. I have homemade soup every day, homemade pies every day. Um, I make my own Mexican hot sauce, my own salads. Everything's homemade. So. I think the quality of the food and um, the quantity and the good, um, you know, there's good conversation and everybody, you know, likes to come and enjoy everybody's friendship. If you're in St. Johnsville and your stomach is growling, come here to the Hungry Bear Cafe. I ordered their special, the growler, and trust me, if you come to the Hungry Bear, you're not going to be leaving here hungry. I certainly did not. To top it off, I had the seasonal treat, strawberry rhubarb pie, and it looked to me like it was a quarter of the pie. It was huge, and all the servings here are it, I guess, is appropriate to take care of a bear's appetite. We head up out of the valley along winding Highway 114, following the creek to Route 29 and Gray's Gardens. It's safe to say that there isn't a mother on earth who doesn't love flowers for Mother's Day. We're at Gray Gardens and I'm holding what was my mother's favorite flowers, these beautiful Beautiful pansies. Here at Gray's Garden, there are three greenhouses filled with very colorful flowers. And then if you come back in the summertime, there's a stand out front where they sell their own homegrown vegetables. I'm gonna dirty my fingers, paint my toes, stay up all night. Before we leave St. Johnsville, we visit historic Fort Clock, constructed in 1750 by Johannes Clock. Today it serves as a National Historic Landmark, a 30-acre complex of original colonial structures. It opens for the season on Memorial Day, with colonial tradespeople demonstrating their crafts, including blacksmith Eugene Wagner. I learned blacksmithing in Germany back in, when I was a young man of 15. I apprenticed for three years, came out as a journeyman. After I became a journeyman, a uh, journeyman usually travels the world, and I did. But I forgot to come home, so you I, ended up here? I ended up in the Mohawk Valley. I lived uh, in the Mohawk Valley since 1953 when I come here. This is the original building that was built. Uh, the road was built in, in 1800, between 1800 and 1820, and this building was built. This is the original building. The floor that we're staying on is the original floor. The wooden one's been replaced because that's for shoeing horses. The forges are limestone forges. The tempering troughs are very uh, unique. Yes, they're the only limestone tempering troughs that I'm aware of in the area. So I still do uh, school programs every summer. Uh, that is my main interest in blacksmithing right now. What do you like most? Oh, the, the love when I let them twist steel. The love when you when you make a fire and you bring hot steel out, that is exciting, you know. And and the bellows here. The all all the children get to pump the bellows. You know. They all pump the bellows and uh, that makes them uh, that that they, they stay in line and everybody gets to pump three, four times and then next one comes on and so it's 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 always a joy. Yeah. Another craftsman you'll meet on opening day is tinsmith Olaf Jansen, who demonstrates the age-old art of turning and rolling tin plate. Basically, you can think of tin, tinware as the plastic of the late 18th and throughout the 19th century. It was ubiquitous. Interestingly, there's not a whole lot of it around, uh, original material around anymore because like 
the plastic of today, it was rather expendable. Uh, it didn't last forever. Uh, but virtually everything uh, in terms of household material, vessels and uh, lanterns, lighting equipment, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, uh, was made from tin. And uh, interestingly, we're still running across uh, new finds, new discoveries, uh, uh, even to this day, that turn up in antique shops that uh, have been made out of tin. And, it's like, oh wow, they made these out of tin, you know, it's amazing. My favorite holiday is just around the corner, Memorial Day. Now, if you haven't made your plans for your Memorial Day, you may want to uh, take a ride down here to Fort Clock and get a taste of Colonial Days. There'll be all kinds of craftspeople here, including the tinsmith and the blacksmith that we just met, and you can even see one of these being made. Visit Fort Clock on Memorial Day. There will be an encampment of the Tryon County Militia and historical reenactments. Artisans will demonstrate Mohawk Valley crafts from over 200 years ago. Relive Mohawk Valley history this Memorial Day from 9 to 5 at Fort Clock in St. Johnsville. We're going.